Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass, your weekly automotive podcast hosted by two rather uninformed enthusiasts. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm Sam from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. And you can watch us each week. We hope you enjoy the episode. Well, I have to say, mate, it feels quite nice to be home. It, it feels lovely to be back in a nice freezing cold studio. <laughs> <laughs> no, but don't you agree? Like I just it's familiar surroundings. Yeah. I've missed this. <laughs> Me too. Australia was great. But no, I, it wasn't. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> Did you generally not enjoy no, Australia? No, honestly, mate. I and, and thank you as well for uh, mate sorting it all out and whatnot. Thank you for coming. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I we are, we always have a good time anyway. We, it, it, it was a good laugh. It was a good laugh, yeah. but. Yeah, I just I just like mm. I like sitting here with you, mate. Yeah. You know, we have our little chats. We moan about the weather. It's it is as great as the live events were and have been this year. It's just nice sometimes just to natter away with you and yeah. Anyway, well, that's what we're going to be doing today. Good. Um, I hope you're all happy that we're we're back in our usual surroundings in in the studio. Like Tony pointed out, it's a little bit chilly, but we've got the uh, portable uh, radiator blasting behind us. Yeah. Twiggy's in the bed next to me, shivering. <laughs> little, literally. Literally, this is miserable. Um, but we're going to power through the cold uh, and bring you a, a fairly regular episode because, yeah, it's been a while through all the live events in Australia and then the live events in the UK before that. Um, it's felt like ages since we've just sat down and had a bit of a natter. Oh, it's been a month easy. Easy. And easy. we have a lot to catch up on because, we well, not only has a lot happened in the automotive world since we've been the other side of the world, but also we had some experiences in Australia that we didn't really talk about, didn't have a chance to talk no. about. And they were quite big experiences. <laughs> some of them were epic. <laughs> some, some of them were epic. So yeah. let's launch straight in because... Uh, right at the end of our trip, we went to visit the incredible Lee Collection. And I have a couple of main channel videos still to come from the Lee Collection visit. Uh, but whilst we were there, you essentially became a motor journalist <laughs> on, on like Evo Car of the Year Day. I did. And just got to jump in and drive... Well, all the cars you've been wanting to drive all year. Whatever I wanted, basically. Whatever you wanted. <laughs> Literally. Which is the sort of hilarity of the Lee Collection. Yeah. Just before we get into it, to clarify, in case you don't know who the Lee Collection are or what we're talking about, uh, this is a private collection in Perth, Western Australia, uh, which has popped up in the last few years. Um, my good friend, Josh... Uh, who's a very, well, I think he still is a good photographer. I was going to say was a good photographer. Still is a good photographer. And uh, en ended up working there. Mm -hmm. So I sort of got this lucky in to the collection. And it's 180 cars now, I think they said. They will, it will be by the end of 2024. Okay, 180, 180 cars, cars by the yeah. end of 2024. And I mean, it's just not only every supercar you can imagine, but it's the most open and welcoming supercar collection I've ever heard. And they are the coolest guys you're ever likely to meet. Just so generous, yeah. so chilled, so laid back. And it is a case of, what do you want to drive? No, I mean, they don't literally walk up to any person in the street. No. So <laughs> we've somehow been lucky enough to sort of end up on the inner circle. But yeah. if you are part of the friendship group, they just seem to hand keys to anyone and everyone. And, and I obviously just entering that i couldn't believe our but i use the word blase lightly but they just went well what do you want to drive <laughs> so I'm, well all of them please yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i literally like i could spend a year here literally. and make a video every week and i still would not have got not through all the collections so uh so tell us what were the i think it was three cars in total that you drove yeah so i drove um angie black MG GT Black Series. Um, 812 Competizione. 812 Competizione Which Ferrari. surprised me. But, um, and 765 LT. I mean, big hitter cars. Big hitter cars. And cars, cars that we've kind of spoken about a lot on the podcast. So let's start let's go through it in order let's start off with the amg gt black series now i had especially arranged this you did because i know that you've been well you've had your eye on that car really ever since it came out oh, i have yeah um you've previously owned amg gt gts gtr gtr pro yep. <laughs> well <laughs> done so, um, <laughs> the the black series did you ever have any of the convertibles by the way no uh, no okay. no i'm not a convertible man I had an SLS back in the day, remember? Yeah. So okay, I, yeah. I have an affiliation with fast front-engine Mercs. 
but you hadn't had the chance to get up close or get behind the wheel of a Black Series no. yet. So that was the, when I, when I was making the plans with Josh. I said, "Look, can you can you ask the team? Could we definitely at bare minimum take out?" the Black Series. And he said, yeah, no problem at all. Yeah. So, and that was our proper driving day as well. We went up into the Perth Hills. We did. Uh, got a little unlucky with the traffic and stuff. But anyway, talk us through your experience. Well, where do I start, mate? Uh, uh, so, uh, so starting from getting in it, yeah. essentially, all very familiar, all very Mercedes, obviously. The thing that always annoys me with <clears throat> that era of Mercedes is that stupid entertainment system mm -hmm. feels so dated it now it feels dated it's not touch screen it's got a fiddly um like i drive twoggle pad thing which is uh, horrible to use especially when you compare it to a, a modern Porsche or a modern Lamborghini, maybe not so much a modern Ferrari because they're a disaster. <laughs> Too many but, touch screens. <laughs> yes, it's a disaster. But, but yeah, but, uh, Merck could probably do better, but the AMG Black was probably the last of the older generation before they slot all the new stuff in, right? And this is the thing, like, I think we should just tangent on this for a second because we spending so much time getting in and out lots of different cars we talk about touch screens and infotainment a lot and there's a big benefit these days for some things not being touch screen as mm. you just touched on <laughs> <Pun intended. laughs> uh, Ferrari have gone too far in the wrong direction they where have, everything yeah. is touch screen yeah. I still like the odd physical button especially for air conditioning things that you're going to use regularly that you don't want to have to be going through a touch screen or sub menus yeah. for but the problem with that older generation Merc tech is I think it's overly complex yeah so not only is there not some functionality which you kind of want or expect to be touchscreen like apple carplay or or your music and things like that but just it's just fiddly it's a menu and a menu mate. it's a menu and a yeah. menu and to access things and the buttons are always in a slightly annoying place and that's the that's what i think we mean when we say you know it's, it's not touchscreen we're not saying we want everything to be touchscreen no. but there's some things which you would expect in 2023 to be touchscreen uh, especially when you think that's a, a, a big ticket car it's a 330,000 pound car list and up until recently they were nearly 400 grand on on the used market you know so it's a big ticket car you know so instantly when i got in it I take that aside all felt really, really familiar. All familiar Merc. Great big long bonnet. Not too dissimilar to the DRs and the Pros. Felt very, I felt very at home straight away. I knew where everything was. We goes out the garage. Obviously, we start driving on the on what we would call like an A road or a highway in Australia. Yeah, dual carriage Dual carriage like yeah. yeah, that sort of thing. And uh, it, <laughs> listen. The elephant in the room with that car is the noise. It's all people talk about, oh, the noise is that not that good. And, yeah, you're probably right. The noise isn't as it should be for a big thunder in V8. But let's not forget, guys, all these modern cars, they never sound as good as the, the older stuff anyway now. Things have changed. I know you can put an exhaust on it, but it, it didn't sound terrible I don't think it sounded terrible. It's dead quiet outside. Yeah, that's going to be my point. Yeah, but I'm not inside. I'm not outside. I'm inside. Yes, they 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 have done a good job to create a sound environment inside the car that that makes you feel like you're in a big thundering V8. Yeah. I think most people have only experienced that car from the outside. Yeah. Uh, and it is insanely disappointing. It's a wet fart from yeah. the outside. Yeah, and there's yeah. a black series. You know, even when we're in the Lee Collections warehouse and you go to start it up and it just goes, oh. Yeah. You're like, come on. That's where the disappointment lies. And I will not, I will not, <laughs> I will not let that go. <laughs> it's a black series. It's <laughs> human. But, but I, I completely understand. But, the the association with Black Series now has completely changed. The old SLS Black Series, the C-Class Black Series, they were monsters, mate, and didn't go in a straight line. This is a completely different kettle of fish, this new car. It's a precise... Um, uh, what would the other word I'd say? It, it, it's very honed in... Yeah, focused. It's, focused... Yeah, yeah track car it's not it's not of the old so i 
I get the noise thing, and actually inside it pumped through the the speakers. It, it didn't bother me or not bother me. Do you know what I mean? It is what it is. I I always look at modern cars, and I care what they drive about. I care about the brakes. I care about how it turns. I, I care about all of that stuff more than noise, essentially. I and yeah, the thing is, as you say, as a driver, it's definitely nowhere near as bad as it is from the outside and so few people have been fortunate enough to experience it internally yeah that's why so so you're right if you owned the car how upset would you be i don't think you'd be as upset as a, a passerby Absolutely or someone not. at a car show yeah uh, and i do believe the lee collection had an exhaust on that car when i drove it last year and they took it off. Well, Josh says he took it off for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to give you as an authentic That's experience That's what he said, yeah, 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 yeah. Good man. He He's a lovely man. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so so you've already touched upon the fact that this is a very different Black Series. It's, it's honed in, it's focused, it's purposeful. So when did you start to discover that? Could you tell that straight away out the box or, or when did you start to go, oh, oh wow? Because you had certain expectations, I'm sure, for the car. Hi. Yeah. Very high expectations, obviously. I knew it was special straight away, and we always talk about that 100-yard thing, and I knew it was a proper car anyway, but I kind of already knew that anyway because I'd seen them on track before and I'd seen them about. So I already knew it would be a proper car because when do the Germans, when they make these track special stuff nowadays, when are they not good? They're bang on. It... it it's a car for me, that car. It absolutely ticks every box what I look for in a car, almost. So, my expectations were were met from that from that respect. I could tell it was very dialed in, yet a bit subdued. Okay. Originally, initially. And then when we started to get up on the hills... I obviously got the car loads more, but was a little bit disappointed. <gasps> uh, not, uh. I'll come back to it, but I thought, this actually is a little bit of a dead instrument. And I don't know whether, if we go back to the noise, whether it's because of the noise, but like I said, I was never really that bothered about the noise, but it turns out I was in the wrong settings. Uh -huh. Like most of these modern cars, like my M3 Touring, like most of these modern cars, Porsche less so, because there's not too many settings with Porsche. You can you do. Just, yeah, you just rock up and go. But most of these modern cars now, you, you've almost got to set them up before you get going. So I started to play around with the... You know, the driving modes and the traction control. Because there's what? There must be... Ten modes. Yeah. I mean, like, oh, there's a race plus, I think, is the hilarious or race, race. Yeah, I so there... <laughs> flipping hell. There's normal, sport... Sport plus sport race or plus race, race, plus. race, and then individual, I think. Something ah, like okay, that. Okay, yeah, sure. Anyway, there's millions of them. <laughs> yeah, so, amount. so, obviously, it wasn't my car, so I was trying to be as respectful as I could. I know the lad to do what you like, but... No, I always like to drive mm -hmm. other people's mm -hmm. cars with a bit of respect. So as I as we were driving round, obviously I was following you in a certain car. Can I say we're going to come on to that in a okay, second? Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> and and then um, Josh was in front in the eight twelve competition. So I had a lovely view, and I'm driving the car, and we're then starting to get into the hills. So I'm switching the Malentino. And it's starting what to cut the Ma Malatino, Man Malentino, Man Malatino, Malatino. So I'm switching the Malatino on the on the steering wheel. Malentino. Ma <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I made me go. Keep Bastard. going. So yeah. <laughs> so I'm switch so I'm switching that, and and obviously the, the the more I switch it to the right, it it the car's coming alive. And then as I started to really get on, we started to push on a bit. There was like I felt the traction control coming in too much. So I'm, like it was really it started to bog down. I'm thinking, well, that's annoying. So I then switched it all off, basically. And then uh, at the time of my life, it was like <laughs> one of the best cars I ever drove. <laughs> it's like, flipping hell, this is unbelievable, this car. It's so fast. And it's really weird how the power comes in because you think it's really linear. Then it goes mad towards the end of the revs. Um, unlike quite a lot of other turbocharged cars, it seems to, it has a, power band and then goes again towards the end so 
I took a bit of getting used to, especially for turbo, because they're always so linear nowadays. Sure. So that was good. Really, really fast. Brakes, amazing. Obviously, I love a car with good brakes. Um, I started to get a bit of heat in the tyres as well. And I just thought this car is a, it's a real precision lap time. It's a proper, proper bit of kit. The front end was amazing, but it still wasn't. And I said this at the on the on the day. It's still not as dialed in as our car, mm. as our cars. Mm. I honestly do not know how Porsche have done it, but it, it, the it, front did, end on the nine nine two. GT3 and GT3 RS, it's, I d- it's, <laughs> it's hard to it, understand. It, it is literally, and no matter what I go in, because I own that particular car, I always compare the front ends, and it wasn't as good. But And then when you think, well, the Merc's got a big engine at the front, and it is set up differently, undoubtedly faster than the GT3, obviously. Um but I loved it, mate. It's yeah. a, it's a real. You said though, you you said earlier that you felt a little bit cold. Uh, you, uh, you know, you, a bit of a dead instrument until I turned it up. Fine, okay. So that that's uh, at that point. So it's the sort of classic German thing, is it? Of just like you're not ready for this. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. It, it's why when we always say that the Ferraris and even Lamborghinis to a certain extent. Extent. They're special at 30 mile an hour. Mm. That Black Series isn't special at 30 mile an hour. Interesting. It's just a really good car. Yeah. You've got to wind it up. And did it feel very similar to a GTR or GTR Pro at the slower no. speeds? No. It still felt different to it, those. It, you could tell you was in a different car. It's a completely different For car. For good though. or work. Because um, when we went out last year with the cars, the boys bought a, a GTR Pro and a GT. R, I think, and the GTR Pro was a bit leery, had a big exhaust, and they all preferred the GTR Pro because they said it felt a bit more in your face at it, slower speeds. Yeah, you know, just a bit more, a bit more gnarly, a bit more like uh, character to it at the slower speeds. Y- yeah, the, the 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 Black Series, and a lot of that's always to do with noise, right? Mm. You know, Lambo, especially Ferrari to an extent, they have that noise and that burble at 30 mile an hour and that's what gives it the character the Merc's dead quiet yeah. apart from the the noise that's pumped through the speakers obviously so I didn't really get that I could just tell it was a real proper bit of kit yeah. and and it is but it's like not most modern cars now it has two or three personalities yeah yeah well that, but I think that's one of the biggest selling points for that car that's what blew me away is is that it? It is a fully fledged track weapon, as you say. Lap time annihilator, something that you or we could have taken on that Austrian trip, and you would have been ecstatic. But probably even more ecstatic than you'd been in the GT3 because it's a cruiser as well. You've hit the nail on the head. It's literally I could have done, and because it being German, I could have I could have done the auto bonds in that car in more comfortable more comfort than the GT3. Gone round the track probably faster. And then driven home and it being absolutely fine. Yeah, loads of bags in the back. Nice like, and quiet. Yeah. It's, no, I, and it looked amazing on the road. That's what I was going to ask oh. you. And I know we spoke about this because I was obviously following you. I know you was in something pretty special as well, to be fair. But they look mega, don't they, when they start coming up behind it's you? It's so aggressive. And they yeah. always look good. I remember when you had that GTR Pro and you followed me out of the old studio at the Duke of yeah. London. And I was like, that thing looks amazing. But yeah. that Black Series, it's so wide. Yeah. You see the wing and you were just coming snaking up behind yeah. me. And I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> very, very cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we got to the top of the hills. I was doing some filming. And for the drive back... You were given the opportunity to swap cars and jump into the Ferrari 812 Competizione. Well, Josh just said to me, uh, do you want to drive the Ferrari back? <laughs> well, I said, sorry. <laughs> I said, uh, have you driven the Competizione before? I said, no, <laughs> of course not. No one in the he world said, has, Josh. Yeah, Josh, there's only a certain <laughs> amount of them, and I've only ever seen two. He said, well, there you go, then. So I literally just drove it back. I mean, and, and obviously, Josh is incredibly kind, but... As is Lawrence. I mean, you know, uh, unbelievable. They're, mate. they're just here. I mean, I'd met him once at that point. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'd had like a little drink at dinner, and then the next day we're driving all his cars. Around. Yeah, absolutely. No, we'd guy. not. No, we'd not even met. I'd not even met him. I oh, know that's because we landed. 
That's, you'd not even met him when you were driving his car. <laughs> driving his car, I mean, yeah. just the best. I mean, that whole team, that whole team, uh, just the best people in the world. And then when we met him, we were coming, he'd come and listen to him. How was the day? day, guys. Go, uh, go, uh, cars all right? So, yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. We went flat in all of them. Uh, yeah, we did, yeah. Um, and he loves it. Uh, anyway, so, yeah. Now, okay, let me get your thoughts initially on this. So, 812 Competizione, because of the lack of media media around that car <laughs> understandably because Ferrari doesn't need to review them you know I mean it doesn't need people to review them they, well, they're, all they're, all, they're all sold and yeah, they yeah. couldn't care less yeah yeah I just have felt like there's been less hype around it than the TDF you know when the TDF came out everyone went nuts it was the scariest craziest wildest car in the world it had this reputation it sounded the nuts mm. like just I was like TDF 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 mm. since the competition has come out I've just been a bit like I, like I'm not sold on the looks of the coupe. I like it. I know you do. Mm. It's big. It's big. It's car. a big car, but so is an 812. It's not. Again, let's touch on sound. Uh, it's not as orally impress, hourly impressive yeah. as the as the TDF and the cars, but uh, you know, side it. Um, it was getting out of a black series. <laughs> yeah, fair. fair. <laughs> um, and I don't know. Like I, I'd spoken to Shmi about his experience. I spoke to I think Paul and Seb drove one in LA. Yep. Like everyone was like, yeah, it's like just a bit of a a louder like eight twelve super fast. And I was like, no one had told me like a, like no one had told me that that thing is the nuts. Like no one was like this thing is the bomb. Apart from Raffaello Di Simone, who's Ferrari's test and development driver. So I should probably have listened to him rather uh, than anyone else. Yeah. So long story short. I actually turned down the opportunity to drive that car on that day. There was a bigger reason as to yeah. why. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Yeah. But Josh did offer me first, do you want to drive it back? And I said, no, no, I'm good. And then he said, well, Tony, do you want to drive yeah, it back? Yeah. So you were way more excited than I was. And after you'd driven, I regretted the decision. But talk to me. So jumping inside, is it that same lightweight special Ferrari feeling that you get in all of that? Did you jump in and go, oh my God, I'm in something real it, it it's the same feeling i get when i always jump in a ferrari mate whether it's Any like ferrari, okay just go, yes i'm in a ferrari yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've made it or at least josh and lawrence and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then to the left you've got that competition only written on the on the dash and you instantly know you in i didn't even need to start it up mm -hmm. you knew you were in something special so um i starts it up instantly a, a big v12 roar yeah again we go back to it slightly muted but that's the world we live in nowadays that that's the way it is it's never going to be like a tdf and and not going to want to kill you like a tdf because there really isn't any or many cars in the world that drive like a tdf or want to kill you <laughs> yeah, like a, yeah. even or didn't a, drive i think that was the scariest <laughs> thing about it they were just even an f12 wanted to kill you yeah yeah fair, uh, you fair. know that the ferrari <laughs> ferrari don't really make cars like that anymore because they want to sell their customers new cars they don't want them dead yeah, yeah basically yeah. so the eight the 812 is very tame compared to the the f12 and the and the tdf anyway so but driving it straight away and i and i said to you I think it feels way different to mm. eight twelve. It, it is, of course, it's a it's a better version of a of an eight twelve, and it's got to be. But my comparison when when you when I was telling you was like the difference between a normal four eight eight and a pista. There's a twenty or thirty percent difference. It's better. Is it is it worth the one point five or one point four million pound price tag? Probably not, but is a TDF worth a million quid? No, they were 400 grand new, you know, that's just an inflated price, essentially. So, did I like it? It's a mega, mega car. It's a proper bit of kit. It's way more civilised than what I expected, probably. Um, does it still feel like a stripped out special car? Yeah. Interesting. For sure. Yeah, I, I, as I say, my expectations have been f not low because I know it's a Ferrari. I love the 812. It, like, I was, but I just wasn't there like going, of all the cars in this garage, that's the one I can't wait to get behind the wheel of. Yeah. And, 
But then when you got out at the end and you were like, Woo! I was yeah. like, oh, damn it. I've, but I get that with I've all been Ferraris, silly. though. Like you, uh, like but you I would do. too. Exactly. I just don't know why. I think I just, I've just, I'd written off that car probably unfairly or yeah. unnecessarily. But let's just clarify as to why I didn't take the opportunity because I'm sure you're going like, oh, Sam, what an arrogant dick. Like yeah. turning down the chance to have an 812 Comp to journey. It was in an electric car. That's because <laughs> I was in a Tesla and I just really wanted to know. That's because I was driving a McLaren P1. Well, fairly outrageous. I mean, <laughs> what a joke. I mean, just to go back to the whole, like, guys, what do you want to drive? Yeah, like, literally. The P1? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this was a silly moment. I literally, we landed from Sydney, uh -huh. got an Uber to the hotel, dumped our bags, went and found Josh, and I got into a P1, and we... Went Pretty up much the hill. Away, so yeah. From one was, aeroplane to another. We, li we, literally, when he was like, oh, do you want to drive anything else? I'm like, nah, I'm no, not, no, I'm like, good. <laughs> I'm not really sure when I'm next. There's a tiniest of chances I might get to drive an 812 Compta journey at some point in my life, given the amazing opportunities I get. I don't think I will get a P1 opportunity, so I'm just not going to get Which out of this car. Don't work. Well, people just don't use them and mm -hmm. they don't work in the back. So there is a main channel coming on the P1 experience, my second time behind the wheel of a P1, but for a longer drive, a, a, a more of a chance to try and understand it. Yeah, 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 nearly two hours. I say we, we got pretty unlucky with traffic and stuff. And as you pointed out, it's, you know, this wasn't a press car that I could find, like feel a bit more confident to push on. It's, it is a, privately owned car and yeah. at that point we hadn't seen Lawrence so I didn't want to be like oh yeah no really good day I did crash the P1 <laughs> yeah. uh, so oh, please at least let me pay for your dinner <laughs> yeah we were spending three days with them so yeah. uh, I didn't want to take the piss entirely so yeah main channel video coming on that but but you know I I wasn't being the arrogant stuck up YouTuber douchebag you might have thought I was being by being I don't want to drive your Ferrari <laughs> yeah. uh, I was in something which at the time I thought was a little bit more special uh, but I regretted the opportunity uh, nonetheless Competizione is probably Worth, worth more money. I, I would say definitely worth the more. The money. But it's not about the money, dude. No. You know, it's about just the first time else. I've ever heard you say that. <laughs> Been ill all the time I've known you. It's not about the money, mate. <laughs> it's all about the money. It's all about the money. <laughs> That's why this week we've been sponsored by. It. No, I'm joking. Um, anyway, so long story short, we had another couple of amazing days. Um, more of that content still to come on the main channel. But uh, I want to touch on our sort of final, I guess, few hours uh, driving cars in Australia because. At the end of last year, when I went and do that paternity leave content, which went out at the start of this year, when I visited the Lee Collection, the last thing we did on that trip was go for a big drive with, mm. with a lot of the cars that were in the collection at the time. We must have taken 20 or 30 cars for, for a big old blast. Everyone was jumping in and out of other things. And I didn't film it. And genuinely, it was one of the best experiences of my year. Yeah. And this happens quite a lot. We spoke about it. Most of the automotive experiences I have when I don't have to pick up a camera are the best experiences. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I've done some amazing stuff on film, driven some incredible cars, done the adventures like taking the 360 Tenerife and things like that. But the really moments that stay in my mind are the ones I'm not filming because I can actually focus on the moment. Yeah. And I'm not thinking, what's the angle like? So... I was keen to try and repeat that if we could, because it was such a cool day. Yeah. And I was said to Josh, like, is there any plans to do a big drive? He said, oh, yeah, actually, on Saturday after your live event, we're thinking of going on a drive. And I said to you, Tony, I said, we have to go on that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. E even if it means leaving the event a little bit early and being a tiny bit rude to the amazing people that turned up, we do not want to miss we're that going. drive. We're going. Because yeah. it's just fun. And as I say... Lawrence just tends to get a, a load of his friends yeah. and everyone jumps in whatever cars they want. Literally, yep. it was... It was like a, a free for all. Yeah, free for all. Yep. <laughs> like keys in a bowl, you know, that kind of free for all. Yeah. And it's like, what's no, the windscreen? So people are like, can I take that? Can I take that? Can yeah, I take yeah. that? So we were trying to be super, we were like, mate, whatever. whatever. Like, just put us, if you have to put us in a car together, like, Josh was like, no, no, what do you want? So I just said, well, can we put Tony in the 765 LT? Because oh. I've often spoken about it in this podcast, I think it's one of the most underrated modern supercars. Yeah. I loved my experience in it. I think. I thought you maybe would enjoy it and you driven Black Series 812 Comp oh, yeah we ticked a lot of the boxes oh, yeah and so apart from new GT3 RS which even I haven't driven I was like that's the one that I want Tony to experience yeah well well, again like when he said like drive the 765 LT and he's, you're almost like because I wasn't that bothered about driving it he said no mate go and drive the 765 you haven't mm. driven it go and drive it yeah. and he never really said anything about from apart from you know go and drive it because I didn't, I didn't want to give you any preconception. The Black Series and stuff like that, I was happy to kind of... Yeah, But yeah. I just wanted you to just go and have an authentic experience. Also, because I don't know many other people who've driven the 765 LT, so yeah, I okay. not really had anyone to bounce off. Yeah. I regretted not being a little bit more forceful in my choice. 
because I was like, you know, everyone was grabbing, and yeah, you know that thing where like really polite. Well, because you know everyone else was like, mate, I'll take that, and I was like, yeah. no one's going. Just give me a car, Josh. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, this is a bit. So I just said, I said, mate, honestly, just give me a car. I don't care. I'm yeah. super happy to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I do sound like an arrogant prick. <laughs> He gave me the Aston V12 Vantage convertible. Stunning spec, white with the red interior, beautiful car, quick silver exhaust. Just not the, you know, this was a drive, this was a 40 minute drive, maybe an hour, mm. when you wanted to literally light your balls on fire. It was yeah. one of those drives. You wanted to literally just be nuts to the wall, like, Wah! I get back and like, thank God I survived. Highways, tunnel tunnels, runs. like just accelerating yeah, from yeah. the lights, yeah. loads of crazy. Everything else that was there, there was the new Lamborghini Countach, there was a Lamborghini Sian, there was an 812 GTS with a full Novatec exhaust, there was an RA with the most awful exhaust I've ever <laughs> had on in my God. life. STO. STO, like everything loud and shouting yeah, full of And I was yeah. just like, hello, everybody. <laughs> hello. <laughs> in the boat, just cruising. <laughs> I couldn't, I never heard the car once because everyone alongside me was louder. Yeah. And so, as I say, like, Cool car, and I like the coupe when I drove it, but I just feel like, oh, I should have been a bit more lair. I should have said, sorry, Josh, can I take... I would have taken the A12 comp at that point. Anyway, as I say, I sound spoiled. Still cool opportunity. And I still had the, still had the time of my life. Yeah. And I'm so glad we went on that drive. But tell us everything, because reminder, Tony is a McLaren hater. He is not... He has not come back to the fold like I have. I've worked closely with the McLaren team over the last two or three years. I'm fully back on board with Are you the back brand. On board? The, totally. After okay, that Arturo experience. All right. Mate. The 720S Spider experience, which I loved. And then the Arturo experience, which I love. I've, I'm back on board. I'm, I get what's got innocent until proven guilty in my okay. mind with McLaren. Fair. No problem. And, and I love the 765RT. So tell yeah. us all. So I got in it. Mm -hmm. Started it up. It started. Flipping hell. This is a win. Started up. Woo -woo. No key not found. It, it, it was completely fine. Started up. Nice noise. Mm -hmm. oh. Car was shaking. Had a bit of character to it. A lot of vibration. A lot of vibration. Don't look like it's got any soundproofing at all. Maybe a little bit, but cool. No problem. So drives it out of the garage. Leaves it running for a while. All, all the guys are gathering around. We're sitting around. We then get going. As I pulled out of the driveway or the garage or whatever, we turned left out of this road. In 10 metres, I thought to myself, flipping oh, it's one of the best cars I've ever driven. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. And I honestly can say, hand on heart now, it's the best car I've definitely driven this year. Yeah. It is incredible to the point where I had to stop myself, I actually thought, well, that car was literally built for me. Mm -hmm. It's an absolute lunatic, yep. that car. It's, ter it's actually terrifying. It's terrifying. Yeah. It, it's, got, it's got character like a Ferrari. It, it speed like a hypercar. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly fast. The brakes... Very good. Not like that really... There's a little bit of travel. R n not a really long break like the, most other McLarens have. Um, what else can I say? I, I mean, I can't really think of too many minuses. It, it's psychotic as it, a car. It's unbelievable. The two real things that I picked up on, one was... There is still a little bit of turbo lag from that engine. It is still a little bit... It's, uh, it's part of that engine's character, though, I think. Maybe. Like, I, I'm not wholly against that boost feeling. I think it adds oh. to the experience. But you're right. If you're really urgent on it, you're a bit like, come on, come on, because yeah. it's so quick. But not, not, not like a 720S. Nowhere no, near no. like a 720S. It's loads more urgent than the 720S. Um, the uh, uh, and as well, I think it's because they got them stupid, really thin front tyres. Maybe the carbon tug as well. There was some. There, there was still some understeer. McLaren really suffered from understeer, obviously, and it, it was there was still some understeer. But apart from that, mate, I, I mean, I'm being so mm -hmm. so critical. It, it's definitely one of the best cars I've ever driven, for sure. And it's it's a, a car that 
would be really, really, really high on my list to own. And I said to you when I got out. At the meeting point. At the meeting point, <laughs> I'm going to buy one. Yeah, he literally, I said to him, oh, what, the game on the auto trailer? He goes, oh, I've already looked. I've already looked. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, because this car is like, like nothing I've ever driven. Mm. It's, it was incredible. And then once I'd got back and after I'd Calm down. put my brain back in gear, I realised that, it was still a McLaren, as good as it was. It will probably break. Bullshit. And, <laughs> and, 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 and you said to me as well, if you had to pick between the McLaren and the black, initially I did say the McLaren. After I'd had some real thought about it, I would still go the black series as as a whole, as a car, for the many reasons that... The the McLaren is like ten or zero. Mm. You can't mm -hmm, mm -hmm, stop mm -hmm. the. It, it's a flipping wild animal. Yeah, yeah, so if yeah. you said to me you got it, you got it for an hour to blast up that mountain and come back, I'd have the McLaren all day. Mm -hmm. If if you said to me you've got to drive nine hundred miles, you go and do a track day and then you come back out of the Black Series all day. The thing about that LT is it genuinely feels like McLaren Automotive, the engineers, the designers, the looked at all the feedback, right? Looked at the general consensus of, you know, McLarens are all boring and they're all just too easy to drive. And they literally went F you. Yeah. Like F you all. Yeah. And, and fair right, play to them. Yeah, right. Th th that's what you want. You want to. And they did it. Yeah. And they delivered this unbelievable behemoth of a. And all of these things are positives. Terrifying, yeah. unhinged, <laughs> manic, psychotic yeah. car in the best way possible. They they are. I drove that car up to Alexander's Prestige and back. The whole way on the motor, I'm like, yeah. like it never stops vibrating. It no. never stops shaking. The urgency, because I, I believe they shortened all the gear ratios to increase that urgency. Yeah, yeah. So the way the thing wants to take off and it's just... And it keeps going. Angry and it keeps going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've said it and I said, I've, I'm not, maybe I've not said it enough. It is so overlooked, that car. Mm. And this is the problem that McLaren suffered. I remember when I, I think when I did the Arturo piece, I said, you know, I did the, painted the whole picture, you know, I, I haven't had a great time with McLaren and blah, 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 blah. And the McLaren team were like, look, we, we get it, but when are you going to, when are you going to give us a break on the whole, mm. the car's break? The car? I mm. said, I said, unfortunately. Well, stop breaking. Well, no, they have stopped breaking, mate. Mm. This is the point. But I said, the problem is you don't realise the cliff edge that you're not on, or sorry, the vertical wall you're having to climb. Mm. So the fact that no one has really bought into that LT mm. it proves everything that's wrong or the challenge you face. Because just like you said, it's probably going to break. It's probably going to lose a shit ton it's of money. It's confidence. Like, it's confidence. Yeah, in yeah. The and, and, and they are in the brand. probably now delivering great products. I say, I know they're still struggling with Artura deliveries, but the Artura product is fantastic. The 765LT, as we've now both realised, is unbelievable. 750S, let's come on to in a second. But I even, I, well, who was it? Must have been Rory, Rory Reed's review of the 750S, maybe? Or somebody, I can't remember, maybe it's the Top Gear piece. Anyway, and they touched on the nervousness around just this is, mm. you know, reliability, price point. And the more and more that we keep reminding people, the more and more people are nervous. I said, and that's what you're, that's why I have to keep mentioning it because everyone's thinking it. And mm. if we just don't talk about it, then we're in trouble. So long story short, it really upsets me and frustrates me that we me too. had those negative experiences. We all feel that way because what a car. Yeah. And, uh, it made me want one. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, like you, I was like, yes, I wasn't wrong. Mm. This thing is amazing. Yeah. And, uh, but I would be nervous. To, I mean, I couldn't afford to go and buy a 300,000 pound car, but. Um, yes, you could. No, I could. Don't tell uh, lies. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, so I'm so glad you had the chance. And yeah, huge thanks to the Lee Collection yeah. for all of those experiences. As I say, some other fun bits that we haven't touched on, which will be in the main channel video. So um, they are coming soon to wrap off wrap up our trip the last two videos on the you main made channel. A, you made a video about the sound dune one, didn't you? Yeah, a little, some short footage of the sound <laughs> dune. <laughs> we obviously, we talked about it on the episode yeah. last week, so oh. um, that was amazing. <laughs> uh, so I said 750S, let's touch on that. Mm. Um, initial reviews came out. Obviously, the car uh, 
not massively different, I think, compared to like a DB12. It's like 30% new. People seem to love it, though. Um, I'll hold I'll hold my breath until I've got behind the wheel of it. But um, people seem to be very positive about it. Don't most journalists like most McLarens, though, right? In um, in general. And, and, I, and we have never, ever sat on here, mate, really, in general, and said that they, they, the cars are bad they're just fair, unreliable fair, yeah oh, the, M- mclaren have always made good cars good point good they, point they, yeah. they just from where i sit they don't work but or I, most of the time they don't work but is the bigger problem not because so okay fine let, let, i'm not going to be a tackle you on no, the, no. Don't, don't worry but the depreciation i think that's maybe it all comes around to confidence mate. yeah the yeah. whole the whole thing it's is the depreciation um, and it all ties in. Yeah. It all ties in together. You know, if something doesn't work, product doesn't work, or or the depreciation's bad, or no one has confidence in the brand, this is what happens. But look at the Roma and the 296. Ferrari aren't a million miles from heading in that direction. At the I, 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 I agree. And they're Two av- cars that are depreciating like lead bricks they're av- and having issues. They're having a bomb. But you could almost say that about 992 Turbo S. And GT3s, apparently. And, <laughs> and, we, and we say that... 992 Turbo well, I definitely is an all round sports car it's one of the best you can buy I mean they're mm. t- t- absolutely tanking at the moment 110 115 mm, uh, uh, not retail no no what re- what are they retail uh, 130 140 for a still not, bit of miles still on still not that bad they're what 40 grand depreciation and no but the, 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 that's the problem if you got one list people were paying 50 60 over for well, them if you're paying overs you've got to be prepared to lose it at, all at, Absolutely, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. But they've still got some way to fall them. I, I think there's too many of them. My car's going in for uh, its big service next week. Oh, wow. Yeah, to get all the recalls done. Two years done. old, is it? No, 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 no. Because remember I said I'm going to bring it forward. Oh, okay. Because I, I want to get brakes checked. It's got to get the cracked window replaced. It's got a few recalls. You haven't it serviced early? Yeah, well, at least a health check to get... I don't know if I get it serviced. Don't service, service, early, no. But, but uh, I say, I, I want to I get the brakes checked after the track day and the road trip. Um, there was a chip on the wheel when they changed the tyres. So mm. They've ordered a replacement wheel from the factory. Um, there's uh, the cracked window that I want to get look at. Yeah. And I just want to, give, uh, want to get the car given a once-over. Once over, fair enough. Because um, I've had two oil refills... Um, which I've done myself, just topping up the yeah. oil. So maybe an oil change, just to make sure that's all hunkered all week. Yeah, I, I, I used to do that with. I'd done that with both of my previous gen cars. They weren't due a service, yeah. but I just told them to drop the oil out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, just go and have a look around it. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know how that goes on. Um, but watching the 750 review uh, and hearing the fact that you know it's only 30 percent new parts, blah, blah blah, it got me thinking because. DB12, a lot more new parts, but looked very similar to DB11. Mm. 750S, identical visually to a 720S, mm. even though under the skin, apparently a few more changes. New Panamera just launched. Mm. Basically looks identical to the old one. Give or take a few bumpers. Uh-huh. Um, what else have we seen? That's KN. New KN, new KN, which looks like a McCann. Yeah. Um, we saw a couple of those actually in Australia, weirdly. It definitely looks like a McCann from the front, from the back, from the back, sorry. It feels like, and of course, there are lots of cars that buck the trend, but it feels like quite a few manufacturers, definitely more in the sports car world, are starting to play it very safe on design, if really keeping designs very similar. So a lot of companies are coming out saying, oh, you know, we've under the skin a huge amount of changes and all this new technology. And like, okay, Range Rover's a bad example because they only bring out a new car every 10 years, but even new Range Rovers, you know, it's a little hard to tell without squinting between new and old. So why do we think this is? What is the gameplay here? Have we seen the end of great automotive design is there a reason why manufacturers are choosing not to spend lots of money or make a lot of work in this area is it important because for me and this is where i'll leave it off for me if a car doesn't look wildly different i don't tend to get massively overexcited because i'm like okay fine it might be better under the skin but i could buy the old one and no one's going to really know if I'm in the old one or the new one. G-Wagons are probably the ultimate example of that. The, the problem is, mate, sometimes these manufacturers, they can't win. They get they get slagged off for bringing a new car that looks up completely different to the old one, like the BMW M2 or the new M3. They go, oh, that looks terrible compared to the old one. And then they bring a car out that looks similar to the old car and you go, oh, it's too similar. I mean, they cannot win. 
But design, surely, firstly, design needs to be challenging, right? For, for any design to be forward thinking, to be futuristic, to be... People just don't like change. And, you know, uh, well, I, I, saw a few, I saw a few comments on my M3 post on Instagram. Be like, I'll notice how you haven't shown the front end. People are still banging on about that front grill. <laughs> it looks amazing. I think it looks fucking fantastic. Yeah. Just, I like the photos from the back. Um, and uh, so I, I think... 720S was a great example of that. People go, there's the weirdest looking car now. People get used to it. So I understand what you mean by you can't win, but you think that's why manufacturers are doing it? They're playing it so they're going, well, we don't want social media to judge the looks of this car. So we're just not really going to change the way it looks, but make a load of changes under the skin. No, I think sometimes they just, you know, maybe they just think that if it's not broken, don't fix it. You know, like, if, if a product sells and it still looks up to date, you know, there's some manufacturers that, that change their cars every three or four years, <coughs> Mercedes, um, and th th all of a sudden the car looks, the previous model looks really, really old because mm -hmm. they keep updating them so quickly. But there's only, you know, some of these manufacturers, they must hit a wall and they go flipping, and what are we going to do next? You know, what, what, what um, is next? What we got, short of putting guns on and stupid spoilers. And then we go in on them and saying, looks like something's crashed through Halfords. Yeah, no, but I disagree. I, I mean, automotive design has to be one of the leading, uh, leading sort of uh, levels of design in the world. We've seen it over the years and greats like Pininfarina and Touring, all these people like that um, have, have set the bar and look at the, way back in the 50s and the 60s, American car design. But there's icons that we've seen. I mean, the 911, you know, whatever, you can judge about that. But there have been plenty of icons over the year. And it just feels like we're getting more and more new cars get unveiled. And we all go, oh, this looks like the old one. Like, and I don't think that used to happen 10, 15 years ago. A new generation, a new model would look, feel, and be different. And that was something to get excited about. Then. We have big tech jumps then, you know. We, 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 the, the, the tech jumps are less now, you know, <clears throat> 10, 15 years ago. And actually, when you look at design of a car, when you're a manufacturer, I would suspect, the biggest challenge that I would say these manufacturers have got, especially, let's use 911, Range Rover, Golf mm -hmm. as a comparison, mm -hmm. right? We want you, this is the designers, the, 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 the manufacturers' designers, we want you to make a new modern car, but it must still represent what we already sold. It must still look like a Golf. It must still look like a 911. It must still look like a Range Rover. And that's harder, I think, than designing a new car. Mm. It's like the Aston Martin thing. It must still look like an Aston Martin because they've got a certain look. They've got a certain mm -hmm, way about mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. So... You know, that's harder. But then you probably get to a point and you can't really do no more because technology now is right at the forefront. And we, we speak about this a lot, with, especially with electric cars, you know. They're the, 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 the battery tech and, and everything, all the, the tech inside is right 2023. Now, it's right now. How much further can that, move on tech is incredible now especially when you look back like you said 10 or 15 years i mean i, I sometimes get in 10 or 15 year old cars and they look you think flipping hell how was you getting in this 10 years ago and thinking this was state of the art you know but but also if you put yourself back 10 or 15 years ago when you got in there you'd go wow this is state of the art but there's got to be a ceiling. There has to be a wall where the wall get the, the, the bar's always been set so high now with design, like you said, because it's leading. There has to be a point where you, you can't do much more. I disagree. I, <laughs> di I, I disagree. <laughs> what do you I, want them to do I, then? I think the prime example is EVs because I think EV design is next level. I think so many manufacturers are smashing it out of the park when it comes to EV design because they're fresh, they're different. We're getting new shapes, new models, new lines, the ability to use the EV basis, you know, the fact that they're not needing grills and flat floors and things like that to come up with new and interesting shapes and designs where it feels like combustion engine cars are kind of being left behind a bit where they're just going, oh, well, I'll just 
updated bump or two. Or, you know, just keep it fairly similar, and you know, we'll just make sure that it's. Well, there'll be two reasons for that. I'm not going to fight you. No, no, no. But, I, but the, it's, I'm just having a conversation. No, no, no. Argument. But there'd be there'd be two reasons. The grills, electric cars don't need grills, so they don't need to be. Cool, no, but that's the whole point. Down. That's what I'm saying. They get to use that to come up with a different and exciting and a new design. A- absolutely. And then and then as well, on the flip side, these manufacturers and the governments, they want us all to buy electric cars. So mm. maybe they're concentrating on designing mega looking spaceship futuristic electric cars. Leave the combustion cars as they are, as in they're fine, because they're not Really, the future. This is the future. This is the next car. I think that might be it. Maybe it is. I think that might be it because, obviously, as we know, manufacturers are ten years further down the line than we are right now. You know, so I remember going to an event. Oh, by the way, I've got the i five coming. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, is it next week or two weeks? So I've got a six month loan of the i five M sixty. Wow! Which I actually the one that we excited about. Yeah, the super Larry. Oh wow! Yeah. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah. Um, but prime example, I remember attending an event in 2019 at BMW in <laughs> Munich at the headquarters at the factory, and they brought out Hans Zimmer, the legendary film composer, uh-huh. um, as like, we have brought Hans Zimmer on board to help develop the sound of our electric cars. Mm. So that was 2019, and the i5 is the first car that he's put his hand print, footprint, right. melody on. So you didn't play around with some of the sounds. I did play around with noise. In the energetic mode and stuff? Um, oh, sounds the like sport a sport mode and that. No, so there's one called energetic, which makes oh. it sound like a bloody a film score, unbelievably. Right. So, you know, that's four years down the line. He's just the sound part. So right. I think that's what it is. I think designers and manufacturers are pushing so hard to make EVs exciting and attractive. And it's a new world for them. Mm. They've got so many opportunities because the the actual blueprint is different. Yeah. Where from the combustion engine vehicle, they're just like, look, just give it a light refresh. It, it works. We don't need to, because that model line is going to die yeah, in five years. Yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. Panamera will be all electric in its next generation, Imminently, most likely. Yeah. And so therefore, that's when we want it to have a whole new look and represent a whole new vibe. Will it Will we, it exist? Will it be a Taycan cross something? Instead yeah. of a, will it actually say Panamera well, they, anymore? They got rid of the, the estate one, didn't they? For now, sport, at least. Turismo. Yeah, it's gone. It's just the hatchback Panamera right. for now. Right. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing. Maybe that's why they're not mm. putting a lot of... But, I mean, from McLaren and Aston Martin, it's maybe a little hard, harder to argue. But still, we do know, as I say, they're so far down the line, mm. Aston are probably already on the super hybrid or the electric DB... F- f- oh, God knows what it's called. 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I find it... I do find it interesting. No. Um, it doesn't stop me wanting a Panamera, though. <laughs> Remember that conversation oh, we had? Oh, mate, <laughs> please, literally. I've never wanted a Panamera. I actually don't like the Panamera. <laughs> Like Every I've driven, week. I've driven so, I've driven so many. And every time I'm like, God, this is a real poor, yeah. poor. And I just literally last week I was like, oh, I've got to get a Panamera. I know, so weird. Oh, you know the other car I want, Senna. No, nope. <laughs> I want a McLaren Senna, mate. I was watching a DDE video, Daily Driven Exotics, and he took delivery of his Senna yeah. or whatever, and he was driving it around LA. Went to get caught, and I was like, this is kind of cool. Like, that do me a Senna. On. Yeah, go on Senna. What a vibe. And then literally that afternoon, I was driving through mm. Chelsea, and I saw a, a Senna coming the other way, and I was like, oh, mate, Senna's what a thing. <laughs> I'm Can't so even easy. afford a 765 with looking at Santa. So I'm so easy to impress. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm literally like becoming like my dad who walks into a petrol station and goes, <laughs> what's this music playing? I'd love this CD. Um, ben, anyway, so uh, look, we, ha- we had an amazing time to say in, in Australia. I'm uh, glad that we could share some of those stories. Should we touch very quickly on the video that went live just now, our M3 journey? Our oh, it's the funniest thing. I mean, funny at times, stressful for me <laughs> at others. We're going to pick up on two comments that we saw a lot of, and I do know that... <laughs> Lots of you listening don't always cross over onto the main channel and vice versa, but we had two things that we just thought we had to address. Yeah. Firstly, people fuming, uh, <laughs> fuming that yeah. you put standard, in inverted commas, E10 fuel in the M3. Yeah. People, <laughs> FYI, yeah. on the fuel filler cap uh-huh. for the M3, yep. it says E5 or E10. Or E15. Or E15. Where do they sell E15? Well, well it's not it's coming. coming yet. but It's the, coming. It's coming, but oh, the, the, so... the, the car's ready for it. So it's a brand new modern car that makes absolutely no difference what fuel you put in them. Well, <laughs> we, we, <laughs> do, <laughs> we do disagree on this. Tony is a, is a uh, naysayer, uh, uh, a myth debunker on fuels. Yeah. I've had enough... Kool-Aid thrown in my direction from the likes of Energy, uh, so Esso and Shell and all these lots. 
I do believe that a uh, V power or or one of those things yeah. does d- is a different product. Tony totally thinks it's all the same. We're Makes being... it loads faster. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it can that. Can really feel the difference. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I do. I do think it is. A better fuel for your engine. I do think it's a uh, cleaner fuel. I do think it helps maintain the health of the engine. Mm, but right. I'd be fascinated on an MPG test. I don't know how we arrange that. Any fuel companies listening, I don't care who you are, if you're able to or, or willing to let me do uh, some kind of test of standard fuel, the high power fuel, and a synthetic fuel. Let's chuck in. That would be so interesting. That would be amazing. Back actually, to back yeah. test. Because I think 0 to 60, Nurburgring lap. And uh, point A to point B road trip, all three fuels would perform nearly identically. I agree. MPG would be the only thing I'd be interested in. <laughs> I would be. I would be interested to see if the V power maybe gave you half a, or point two of an MPG more, because that is part of the claim. That sounds worth it for an extra twenty five p a litre. Well, okay, so, so Tony is a nice, uh, <laughs> so Tony has never put higher rated fuel in any of his car no like on the gt3 road trip always the base standard fuel yeah but just a reminder because what's wrong with it brand new cars yeah are built to take e10 e5 like they, they might say we recommend v power or something yeah. like that but that's because shell spent a lot of money to get them to say so <laughs> yeah or, so or any of them yeah, yeah, yeah a yeah. high performance engine is going to perform better theoretically with the high performance fuel well, i've never noticed it but long story short I, we we couldn't believe that people were so furious, really angry. Um, and I am a big fuel person, and I really don't get Drinks butt hurt. I, <laughs> I don't get butt hurt if I'm at a, like if I get to a petrol station and they don't have V power. I don't like leave and go to the next one. No, I literally go okay, go cool, on to put the standard stuff in. Like mm. even like in the well, I couldn't do it in the three sixty because that couldn't you couldn't put E10 in that because it gets all clogged up. Oh, all right. I fair. mean, you could do it like once. Yeah, well, I don't drive 25-year-old cars. So. Fair. If yeah. you have an older car, I get it. But it's a yeah. brand new M3. So yeah, firstly, yeah. we were quite shocked by that and wanted to clarify that. And I, I drive one to... daily, by the way. Do you know what? I hadn't driven my car for over a month, yeah, my, M3 M3, touring, my yeah. M3 tour. And I drove it yesterday and I thought, flipping hell, why does this feel so familiar? And I realised I was in Australia in one. I've driven one, yeah. done 500 miles in one. I genuinely want to do that test, actually. I remember going to, that's a 2024 goal, is oh, that right, fuel test. It sounds more like a, that's a very nerdy I'd video. Like to do do maybe maybe it's a podcast episode. I'd like to do that because then you, I can either stand there and go, ha, 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 told you, or you can prove me wrong. We're either going to have to do it independently Uh-oh. or with a very brave fuel scientist or fuel manufacturer they're either going to have to really believe in their product mm. or we're going to have to do it independently but we're going to have to drain the tanks each time aren't we oh, you have to put like 20 litres in drive it to almost empty or like then drain it and then put because you can't mix then you're going to get wrong results you're going to have to get a hypnotist to convince me but okay. or three identical cars would you accept this three identical cars running yeah. on three different fuels lovely so could we get three modern or not modern I think modern I modern. think modern oh, I oh, that's the argument right? I agree Three identical 330i's from BMW or something. Do they still make 330i's? No, you look yeah, yeah. to me confused. <laughs> yeah, they do, yeah. Uh, uh, and, excuse me. Yeah, identical and, and fill them each with a different fuel and then do a road test. Yeah. That would be great. Um, and the other thing we want to pick up on is the fury of us taking the M3 Touring onto the beach. It was the funniest day we ever had. I mean, it was amazing. Well, I thought it was hilarious because when we got stuck, he was really flapping. Well... <laughs> Firstly, let's just clarify a few things. Um, I did a lot of research into this in terms of what beaches we could did drive you? on. Oh my god, a ton of research. Oh, I'm not well going to just go willy nilly and drive on any old beach that I saw. Which beaches we could drive on? Which were the easiest to get on and off? Which were the safest to drive on? Which had the most, you know, um, hard sand, the approach and deproach angles, the ability of the BMW. Oh, I, I did a lot of research. Oh, we, well we paid done, our boy. tickets. We did everything. Obviously, there was an inherent risk because we got stuck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, oh, you didn't. I did. Oh, you, you, you did. Yeah. We had gone on and off the beach using the same entry and exit points about three or four times before Correct. we got stuck. So everyone going like, well, of course, don't. it was uphill. Like, don't give him such a hard time. I gave him a hard time because no. I drove on and off the beach. I just piled in. Fine. And yeah, Tony, yeah, yeah. Tony, the first time he tries it, gets sunk. Yeah. Um, so and I did. I really lost my call. I was really... <laughs> because, as I said on the main channel video, I really didn't want to call BMW and be like, sorry, guys, we've got your car stuck in the sand but like. you know what it's absolutely fine mate because we're good friends and i understand you have little farts and tempers every now and then that's fine i don't listen to you yeah. but 
But also, it might actually be a little lesson for you because it, no one died. We were fine. We were fine. In 30 minutes, we were out. It's no, there's always someone to help. And as I was piling in and thinking, oh, I'm going to get stuck here. I was already thinking, well, there's some pickup trucks up there. So if we get stuck, I'm going to get towed out anyway. So it's we, not the end of the world. Can we blame your technique at that moment? Oh, it was completely my fault. I just Thank piled you. in. Because yeah. a lot of people were saying, why on earth are you taking that car to the beach? It was fine. No, yeah. I just went in the deep bit, basically. I just balls it up. You know. He balls it up. Yeah, that's what happens. It's just better than going in a wall, which which I'm due, by the way. That's due. <laughs> and that's definitely due to happen. <laughs> and we, like, spent well over $100 getting that car fully valet cleaned, by the way. Was so it like, $100? Um, yeah, you didn't know. It was $125, that. Was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Because I said to them, like, it's all got to go. So it's people oh God, were like, yeah, kind of at least washed the underside. I wonder underside. why the radio weren't in there when we come out. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, that car, you could have licked that car. We got rid of, as much, of course, you know, sand is sand, but yeah. it was immaculate. We actually think we handed that car back to BMW in slightly better shape yeah. than it was dropped off. But um, we took all the care and precaution that we felt like we should or we could. And Well, you anyway, did. I, I understand that some people were perturbed by it and upset by it, yeah. but... And anyway. by the way, I would have took my own car on there, by the way. Yeah, I would have taken my own I'd car on there as well. Straight, yeah, and care. that's why I did that reason, to make sure yeah, that, that, yeah. Was, that was the beach we could do it on. Yeah. And we were totally fine. And if we hadn't got stuck, we, no one would have had anything really to say. It was no. like a lovely experience. And nice time. the car was great. And as far as I know, BMW Australia were all fine with it. We had a laugh and a joke with well, it could the have been worse. It could have been in the ocean. It could have been in the ocean. <laughs> uh, or, as you say, on its roof. Um, yeah. But anyway, we just wanted to address that because we were just a bit like, what? Um, that brings the end to 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 our our return to the studio. Oh, I've had a nice time. What a lovely place we to be. We should do this again next week. We will. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> we might. I'm just checking the legality of what I'm allowed to discuss. Uh -oh. We will discuss the Gordon Murray T50 next week. Will we? Because the first reviews are out. Oh. Or, or review, I think. Top should game. I go and look at a couple of them and then what? Yeah, Should yeah. I? Go watch the Top Gear review. All right, mate. Go watch the Top Gear review. Who does that nowadays? Who does Top Gear? I think it's. Uh, I think it was Ollie Q that did it. I think. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, we'll definitely discuss that. And there's maybe something more that I can discuss, but we'll see. Anyway, we'll be back with you next week. So if you're listening to us, thank you so much for checking us out. Uh, you can give us a review uh, via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you can want they? to. Can they? They can absolutely. I, right. I would love a five star, but if you want to give us one, we understand. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you're watching us here on YouTube, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Um, we're getting towards the end of our year, but we've got a number of episodes left before we wrap things up for our annual Christmas break. So as I say, stay around, and we'll be back with you for another episode next week. Bye bye. Bye. See ya.